This is part two of our uh, special two-part episode of The Score because we have the Grand Slam coaches together. Let's welcome back to The Score, Grand Slam coach Norman Black. Coach Norman, welcome back. Hi, Miko. Thank you. And Grand Slam coach Tim Cohn. Coach Tim, nice to see you again. Yeah, great to be back and great to be back with Coach Norman. Okay, Coach Tim, your turn. Uh, I, I wanted to ask if you could like revive or, or remember a, a play from 96. I, although maybe you were just exclusively running the triangle, but do you have like a like a memorable play that uh, you could share with us? Well, we, uh, you know, like I said, we, as most people know, I, I never called plays. Um, it was just, you know, I from. I stopped calling plays probably about 1994 was the last time I started calling plays. It was, it was all just based on triangle. And the reason I never called plays is because, well, the triangle would, would had so many options and, and they could, and it basically ran itself and it allowed me to focus on, uh, on, on defense. And that's what I always wanted. But prior to that, we had a play for, uh, for, I don't know if people remember, but 1992, um, that was after we won our first championship in 91 and we made a lot of trades and we were able to get Jojo Lastimosa from uh, Pure Foods. And uh, um, he, he came in and, and, and Bon Alvarez had, had torn his Achilles uh, heel. So he wasn't on the team. So basically people were calling and I remember this specifically from the press, they would call us Jojo and the 11 little Indians. Uh, because everything was run through JoJo. JoJo would get, you know, 40, 50 touches a game. And basically, we had one play for him. And I don't know if Norman would remember it, but I tell you, JoJo would certainly remember it. Um, that was his big thing when we went to the triangle. He hated it because we never called his play anymore. We called it Max, uh, fist to the side. We put our fist out to the side. And uh, if I wasn't calling it, JoJo was calling it. So... Um, it was very simple. Remember, we had illegal defenses back then. Uh, no, this is not Norman's uh, board. This is my board. But we would ask JoJo to come down and sit on the bottom right here, and then we'd have our two bigs um, out here. Um, then we'd have a, a weak side guard over here, and then the ball handler would be here. Can everybody see that? And it was a very simple play. But we would just screen down for Joe here and here. Two big guys would screen for Joe. And then Joe would use those two screens. Coach, can, can, you, Coach can you make it a little higher? Sorry. There we go. There. Got to get okay. closer. He would make – he would – the two screens would come down to this point, and then Joe would come off the screen either side, either way, depending on how he read the defense. But the idea was for him to land right here in that area, or sorry, over here. Once the ball is passed, then that guy would drop down to the corner. Then our two big guys would spread out and we'd have here. And then JoJo would be right here, sorry. JoJo would be right here with an opportunity to attack. And if you remember JoJo, JoJo would get that ball one-on-one -on -one and he would lift his leg up all the time. He would lift his leg up and play the guy, rock the guy back and forth. And then he would try to uh, attack one on one, and we would run that again. We would run that 30, 40 times a game. I'm not sure I'm exaggerating, and uh, uh, JoJo loved that play. Um, and then when we went to the triangle, you know, he didn't have that opportunity to stop, catch, you know, have everybody spread out for him and allowed him to go one on one. So he had great resistance in the beginning to going to the triangle. He still wanted his max play. And uh, he would always come to me, Coach, call Max, Max, just call Max. And uh, uh, but he was incredibly successful with it, but he loved it. And we had some success. The only problem was that I didn't like about it all is that if he, if he, wasn't, uh, if he wasn't scoring, if, if teams figured out a way to stop him and they put a good defender on him, then we were dead in the water because everybody else was just standing around watching him play. Who was the point guard? Was it Johnny? No, no, no. This is way before Johnny. It would have been Frankie Lim, uh, probably Frankie, and maybe Eugene Kilbun for a year. But uh, those two guys, Frankie would be the one to go to the corner and he'd be the shooter in the corner. 
off, right. off the pass. Do you remember that play? Play. Coach Norma, do you remember that play for Jojo? Jobo Iso for Jojo, something very similar that he used in Mama's Love when he was in the amateurs. He always liked isolating around that foul line, elbow area, where he could just take you down the lane. You put a shooter in the corner. You don't want to help off that shooter because he'll pass it out for that wide open shot. So he got a lot of points off of that, even in the he amateurs. Was, he was deadly from 16, 18 feet. I mean, he was lights out. So you had to kind of press up on him. Otherwise, you just do a standing jump shot. And if you pressed yeah. up on him, then he would tack you. Uh, mostly to the left because he could plant those those big heavy legs of his and then stop at a, at a dime and then cut, rise up over the defense and, and, and take easy eight, ten footers all day long. Or he'd drive right and, and go right through the big men. But, you know, we, you know, he was really powerful and strong. We always talk about, you know, the players of today compared to the players in the, of the past. I would have loved to have seen Jojo Lastimosa play today. I mean, I think he would have been unstoppable, just as he was back in those days. Um, I'm sure the young guys in the league right now would have a hard time trying to defend him. Because defenses aren't what they used to be. I mean, there's just so much up and down, open court, you know, being able to attack your guy off the bat. Everybody's so consumed with shooters on the perimeter that there's less help defense, there's less reaction. So, you know, guys that, that were great, that's why they say, you know, like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan would average 45, 50 right now in, in the NBA because he's not going to be, you know, thrown on the floor by a Detroit Pistons uh, bad boy or whatever. So those guys, another guy would have been like Samboy, Samboy Lim. We're destroyed in this in this uh, this era right now. No one would be able to. Tired, what about Kenneth Derimbus? Yeah, well, Kenneth was probably one of the least, the most underrated players in the league, I thought. Uh, I mean, he was great for for a short period, but he didn't really get the, the, the press that he, he really deserved. He was really a super, uber talented player. That's correct, yes. yes. What about Johnny A? Oh, my favorite. If I didn't play with no, Hector. He can't be, he's my favorite. No, I mean, he can't be your favorite, he's my favorite. <laughs> and if you can <laughs> rebound, you're my favorite, okay? I love rebound. <laughs> Johnny was the best rebounding point guard I ever saw in the, in the PBA. I mean, he sometimes you would just be like, what in the world is he doing inside? It's almost similar to your guy right now um, that you have Johnny, playing. Johnny Thompson. Yeah. For some reason, he was able to take the contact, and he was constantly rebounding the basketball, offensively, defensively. And when he did defensive rebounds, that started the fast break. So, exactly. I mean, I mean, he could score, too. Believe me, he could play defense, too. He'd take the ball from you. But, boy, was he a good rebounder for his size. Coach Lim, what about from that 89 San Miguel Grand Slam team? Who was your favorite on that team, Coach Tim? Well, you know, well, first of all, I have to say that I grew up, Mon Fernandez was my idol. All right, so he was on that team. So, but aside from him, and that's, that's just from pure history back to – Moralco, Toyota days, all the way up to uh, San Miguel. Um, but my favorite guy back then, just because I was also a, a point guard, was uh, Hector Palma. Uh, I loved Hector Palma. I loved the way, um, you know, one of the great things back then, I thought that, that San Miguel did so well through Norman was um, their transition. They ran the lanes so disciplined. They were so disciplined in running the lanes, uh, whether it be an Alma Reyes or Sam Boylem or – doesn't matter. Those guys would run really, really wide and really, you know, chase out on the – not just run down the floor, but they would discipline and run it out on the wings. And that would, excuse me, allow Hector to come down the floor and just be the director. I mean, he just never made mistakes, never. He was always under control whether it was that pull-up jump shot at the free throw line or finding that guy for easy layup. He just never made mistakes on the fast break. You know, you see so many teams go out of control and make a turnover and the ball goes back the other way. That just didn't help and happen with Sam Miguel. It just didn't. And that's one of their biggest strengths, amongst other things. But that was one of their biggest strengths, I always felt. And I loved Hector watching him. You know, we, we all know James Yap right now. He may not be what he used to be, but... I remember him when he was a superstar. I mean, he was pretty much unstoppable. Um, he was almost like a Jojo Lastimosa. Just give him the basketball and get out of the way. And let him go. Don't try to hinder his talent as much as possible.